One of the best things to learn how to paint with watercolor is probably trees and that is not only because of how useful they can be and how versatile they are but also they are quite abstract and that kind of allows us a lot of freedom in terms of our mark making process and ultimately how to create a variety of different trees. With that being said, in this tutorial we will look at how to paint um, two kind of classical trees, one being the oak tree which provides us with a very specific type of mark making process and then the other being the classic pine tree which will provide us with a different type of mark making process. So now that we know what is in store for today, hey guys, my name is Matt. Welcome to another video by artincontext.org where we explore a variety of different art related um, topics. And in today's video, we will be looking at how to paint some trees with the watercolor medium. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, the first tree we are going to paint is the oak tree. If you consider the shape of an oak tree, it resembles the form of a puffy cloud in its most generalized shape. Now, this is a great concept to keep in mind as there is a similarity in shape of both a cloud and an oak tree and the process of painting both is quite similar. So if you painted a cloud before with some watercolor, you can kind of follow the same process. Now, what we do want to do is we first want to develop our oak tree with a sketch, a pencil sketch. Now we could use a reference image for this however it is not necessary because the shape is quite simple um, but how we do want to begin is with a very light and basic sketch of an oak tree. You are more than welcome to use a reference image if you want but it really isn't that necessary. Now when we think about an oak tree we are thinking about this very simplistic cloud shape which has quite a slim or at least a more narrow that forms from the base of that cloud shape and then kind of flows towards the ground which kind of is where it will get slightly more wider as it kind of um, establishes a base that connects to the ground. Now we want our sketch to look a little something like a rough sketch of a cloud with a trunk stemming out from the bottom of that cloud structure but we also want a little shadow to fall on the ground to give a sense of where the light is coming from and this is also going to help us establish some three dimensionality in terms of how we paint in our oak tree. Now once we've established the general sketch we want to start by painting the lighter tones when painting a tree we want to create a variation of tones within the tree so we do this with exploring a various um, or a variety of different greens that start from a light green color to these darker green colors um, so that's what we want to kind of think of as we establish these layers of color within our oak tree with your lighter greens we want to begin by applying these scattered blobs within the lines of your sketch uh, within the cloud shape which will establish the foliage. As we paint the tree we want to leave little spaces in between as well to create this hollow quality of the tree or within the tree um, kind of creating this effect of being able to see through the leaves. Um, we can continue as we paint the tree um, to slowly darken our greens and this is as we move over from the light side of the tree to the darker side of the tree. So we also want to consider um, where the light source is coming from already at this point and this is so that as we establish the foliage within the tree we can start to establish which areas would be more illuminated by the light source and therefore which areas will be slightly darker. Now the aim here is to apply these lighter tones of green paint on one side of of the tree. Um, in doing so you can also start to darken your greens whilst the paint is still wet and, in, and as you do this you can then slowly start to move over to the other side of the tree where the darker area would be and this is where we start to kind of integrate some darker tones of green. Again when we are painting um, or establishing colors within a structure using watercolor it is really important for us to do so by applying um, layers that start from lighter tones to mid tones and ultimately to darker tones and this is where we can now slowly start to transition to our mid tones so once our first application of paint dries completely we can begin to darken our green um, paint mix or a mix of green paint a little more by adding a little more brown or black in the current mix of green and this slowly starts to give it a little bit more of a deeper um, woodsy oak quality. Now a good suggestion is to also add browns because browns create a more organic and natural color palette when darkening your green. So thinking about how to darken your greens with natural and organic darker colors is a great way to kind of um, keep them more natural looking. 
Now we want to add these darker marks coming from the shadowed side of the tree. As we apply from the shadow side of the tree, we will slowly start to paint um, in these marks and lighten them as we come to the illuminated side or the lighter side of the tree. This way the paint also fades and becomes lighter um, in a more seamless way as we kind of transition to the area of the tree or the side of the tree that is illuminated. And again, this is why we always want to consider which side of the tree the light source is present. Now, as we have finished applying the midtones, we also want to allow it to dry completely. And as it dries completely, we should have a nice gradient that defines the natural mix between lighter and darker sides of the tree. So again, the intention here is to work um, onto the surface while it is still wet and creating a seamless transition between lighter areas with lighter tones of green to a darker area or more shadowed area in the trees with darker tones of green. And as we do this whilst the paint is still wet, it will dry all together and create the seamless transition between lighter and darker areas within the tree. Now, as we continue, we can darken our mix of green once again and begin to apply some darker tones on the very end parts of the shadowed side of the tree. Now, every time we make our tree slightly darker in the shadowed areas, we begin by darkening our green mix um, slightly more each time with either some brown or black. A good suggestion, again, is to always make sure you're using browns because this maintains a more organic and natural quality. And what we do want to do is, once again, we want to make sure that when we are working with these darker tones, we work from the shadowed side so that our paint is darkest at the most um, shadowed areas of the tree. And then as we slowly move our way over to the lighter areas, our paint starts to get lighter and dissipates as we get to the lighter or the illuminated areas of the tree. Now we do want to make sure we want to leave those negative spaces within the foliage feature of the tree to create that quality of um, being able to see through the foliage um, and this also just gives it a more realistic quality. Now we do want to make sure we take our time, we do want to make sure that we establish these varieties of tonal values within the tree or in the foliage feature of the tree but once we have done that we can start moving on to the tree trunk and kind of create the same sort of layering effect and proceed with the same process um, as we did for the foliage feature of the tree. Now we're going to proceed with this layering quality again starting with lighter tonal values and moving into darker tonal values and this is where we can make a mix of light brown. Uh, we want to begin by painting the lightest parts of the tree trunk with our lightest browns. Now as we paint in these lighter brown marks in our tree trunk we want to work whilst the paint is still wet and as we do so we can slowly start to darken our mix of brown uh, with a little bit of black or a little bit of more brown and black together to give it a little bit of a darker tonal value. Um, the intention here again is to try to leave little spots of white or negative space to give the tree a little bit more texture and the same goes for the tree trunk. Now the intention is the same with the foliage in the sense that we are working with a shadowed side and a illuminated or a highlighted side and we want to keep that consistent with the foliage so whichever side of the foliage is shadowed we want to integrate darker browns into that area of the tree trunk to ultimately give it the effect of a shadowed side and then ultimately ultimately enhancing that three-dimensional quality. Now we do want to make sure that we are working on the tree trunk whilst the surface area is still wet or whilst the tree trunk is still wet and that is where we establish those um, light to mid-tone qualities where we create the shadowed side and the illuminated or highlighted side with a mixture of darker browns and lighter browns. Now once we have done that we can allow for the tree painting to dry completely and once it has dried completely we can start to integrate some more darker marks into the shadowed sides. Another good suggestion is to add in some little lines and strokes in the negative spaces within the foliage of the tree and by doing this we create this gesture or idea of branches within the foliage of the tree. And this is a great way to kind of just keep that realistic consistency or um, um, visual quality that represents the idea of branches within the foliage of the tree. Now once we have kind of worked on both the trunk and the foliage in the tree we can allow that to dry completely and then we're going to slowly transition into the next part which is painting the leaves. Now leaves are easy and fun to paint, it's all about adding dots of paint within the tree foliage to create a more scruffy and bush like quality within the tree. 
And we do this again by making a light yellowy green color by mixing yellows, browns and greens for the lightest leaves. Again, we want to kind of establish these lighter tonal values in the leaves and then slowly create these darker tonal values in the leaves. We then proceed to add in these little dots and spots with the lightest areas or within the lightest areas of the tree. We can carry this on by slowly darkening the mix with more greens and browns and once we have darkened the mix we can begin to paint the mid-tone areas of the tree and the mid-tone coloured leaves as we slowly transition from the highlighted areas to the shadowed areas. Now the idea is to keep darkening your mix of paint and keep on painting your tree with these little spots and dots and little marks of green um, and as we slowly keep darkening the mix we can move towards the shadowed areas of the tree and ultimately darken them and until they kind of um, achieve this tonal value of a dark green that resembles an oak tree leaf color consistency. Keep darkening the mix of green with some browns and hints of blacks and as you slowly move over to the area of the tree with the greater shadows you can slowly start to um, create that seamless transition between these lighter areas and darker areas um, within the leaves that are represented in the tree. Um, again, another thing to think about is that the colors will always dry lighter than how they appear when wet. So as we kind of darken our green and move towards the shadowed areas, we will see that as it um, dries uh, completely, it will be slightly lighter than as we have painted it. Um, and then lastly, the intention is to then paint the darkest shadowed areas of the tree. And this is where we can now make a very dark mix of green by applying a lot of blacks and browns into the um, dark mix of green. Uh, we can now begin to apply these marks that describe the darkest parts of the tree and this is where we kind of work within the tree trunk and the foliage. The intention here again is to make sure that our shadows remain consistent within the tree trunk and within the foliage on the same side and in doing so this will keep a um, realistic representation of a light source being present uh, within our painting of our tree. Now as we continue with this process we can also take this mix and dilute it with water to create a shadow on the ground. Now remember the shadow will fall on the side of the tree that is darkest or where the shadows are represented within the tree trunk and the foliage. Um, if your darkest part of the tree is on the left then the shadow must fall on the ground that is on the left side of the tree and naturally the shadow will always be um, falling in a more two-dimensional way so we do want to think about where we would like to place the shadow and ultimately how it becomes a distorted representation or a dark distorted representation in a two-dimensional um, plane of the actual tree itself. So remember when painting a shadow um, it is distorted and due to the perspective it will flatten as it lays on the ground. And then lastly we can kind of work in these final details. Once the tree and shadows have dried completely we can begin to add in these little details with a smaller brush and this is again where we can kind of work in these darker lines, create more uh, texture within the foliage and the trunk of the tree. Um, and another good suggestion is to take a lighter tone of brown and proceed to make little light strokes in the tree trunk just to ultimately provide it with a variety of different color values uh, within the tree trunk itself as you kind of proceed to add in some line work to give it more texture. But ultimately this is the process of how to paint an oak tree. Some key things to think about is the general shape, establishing a sketch of the general shape, and then once you have established that sketch, that kind of demarcates the area in which you will start painting. Uh, again, with watercolor, you do want to establish um, your colors in layers, starting from your lightest tones and then slowly working to your darkest tones, um, from your mid-tones to your darkest tones. The intention is to focus on one feature at a time, so starting with your foliage and then you can transition into painting uh, the tree trunk using the same process of establishing layers from lighter to darker tones. Um, another thing to think about are color values that represent realistic qualities and features of an actual oak tree. And in doing so, this is where we start to think about darkening our colors or um, using browns to give it a more woodsy and oaky quality. So thinking through your color schemes and values is also an important part of creating a more realistic oak tree. And then ultimately developing those layers. 
um, and then coming to a point where you allow that to dry completely and then start to work in strategic marks that establish the qualities of a foliage where we kind of create these dots and little um, uh, bush-like uh, strokes to give the tree a more bush like quality and then working in some line work into the oak tree itself to establish some texture and woodsy grains that kind of give it a more realistic quality and then lastly we can add in a shadow which falls along a horizontal plane to give it um, or just enhance the three-dimensionality of our tree painting a little further but now that we have completed our oak tree, we're going to move on to painting the pine tree. Again, painting trees can be explored through various types of trees, but we will be looking at two very classical trees and the second being the pine tree. Now, again, the first step is to sketch out our tree. Let's begin with the basic sketch of the pine tree. A pine tree has a more triangular shape, so we want to keep this in mind as we draw the tree. It's always good to start from the bottom up and kind of develop a generalized sketch and then slowly refine it to ultimately enhance and and give it that more realistic pine tree um, look so we do want to take our time we also want to try and think about how the branches uh, slowly start to shorten as we move towards the top of the pine tree so we can also think of it as this kind of Christmas tree shape uh, we want to try to shorten the length of the foliage as we draw the upper portions of the tree we want to keep the shape to um, kind of this arrowhead form um, and thinking of that arrowhead form as this general shape of the pine tree is basically how the pine tree is ultimately formed now once we have kind of established a very light sketch again we want to just make sure our sketch is very light and kind of faint so that we don't necessarily have these drawing marks present through our painting process we can then start to apply some light tones of paint now this is where we'll begin to apply our first layer of the foliage so what we want to do is make a mix of light green again and this is where we can start working in those browns to give it a more organic color palette uh, we can then proceed to paint these thin scribble like strokes horizontally with a medium sized brush so the intention here is we want to paint the main bottom portion of the tree before we continue throughout the entire tree so the intention is to carry on working on one side of the tree as we continue to paint the branch branches lightly on one side of the tree and that will obviously kind of be a reference to emulate on the other side of the tree so we do want our pencil sketch to kind of establish where we will be painting um, we kind of want to follow our sketch to guide our painting process so remember the watercolor paints will be slightly lighter once it has dried so this is also again something to think through we can also continue with this process onto the other side of the tree where we try to use the width of the one side of the tree to guide the width of the foliage that you want to paint on the other side of the tree again just thinking about it as a reference for the other side now as you paint the tree in light tones of green try to keep some negative spaces once again in the middle of the tree this will help to create a branch um, that runs through the foliage of the tree kind of vertically through the middle section of the tree and through each of those little foliage um, sections that run horizontally through the tree uh, these little negative spaces will create Create that bush like quality in the tree so that's just something to keep in mind as well now as we paint the lighter tones of the tree we are also keeping the concept of the arrowhead shape in the back of our minds to help guide the general and the overall shape of our pine tree as we continue with this painting process of lighter tones um, once we have kind of worked our way all the way through to the top section of the tree we can then allow that to be established throughout the entire tree so we do want to make sure that we work in these lighter tones before again Again, applying the mid tones so now that we have the governing shape painted with our light tone green we can proceed to add some darker qualities to the tree we will do the same with the darker green except now we want to make a painterly mark at the bottom parts of each branch um, we can make our green slightly darker as well by adding hints of browns and blacks into the mix with our green again making sure we adding a little bit more brown to keep that organic um, color palette within our greens Remember, as you paint these mid-tones of the tree, you want to make sure that you don't go over the light tones completely. So we do want to have these moments of light tones kind of peering through these mid-tones as well. Uh, we do want to also try to paint the bottom parts of each branch with some darker tones. Um, and this process will carry on slowly moving up along the tree towards the top. Again, we do want to remember that when we're painting with watercolor, we are kind of adding layer upon layer. And we want to do this by adding light layers first and then slowly integrating these darker 
darker layers on top of them. Watercolor trees look nice when there is a color variation. So try to slowly see how the green changes in its tonal value as you slowly place darker green tones on top of the lighter green tones more strategically and not necessarily uh, totally encompassing those lighter tones of green. What we should see is that our darker green tones are running along the bottom parts of the branches of the tree and by doing so the darker tones will create both a shadow effect on the tree as well as give the tree a greater sense of depth and three-dimensionality. So this is where we are a little bit more strategic with how we integrate our darker tones and keeping them kind of to the base of each of these horizontal branches and foliage qualities and uh, painterly marks that run along each of the branches. Um, another thing to consider is to always make sure we leave some negative space in the middle of the tree along the line that the trunk would run through. So by doing so we'll have room to paint in some brown moments to represent the bark that runs through the entire pine tree. Uh, once the mid-tone application is dried we should see a variety of green colors within our tree which runs along these horizontal branches. Now we're going to move on to painting the tree trunk and this is where we can be begin to make a mix of brown that we will use to paint the trunk of the tree. So when painting watercolor trees we want to make sure that the color palette suits the quality of a realistic pine tree so thinking again about those organic color palettes using browns to kind of give a more natural tone to our greens um, and working in some blacks to kind of darken our brown and create a variation with our browns for the trunk itself so we can proceed to use this mix of brown to add little hints of brown within the negative spaces as well which run through the center of the tree in between the foliage um, and again we want to add brown in the areas where the trunk would run through the tree describing how the trunk kind of establishes this um, kind of base um, which the uh, branches would be connected to. Um, so another good suggestion is to also add little lines through the tree within the negative spaces within the um, foliage that runs in a horizontal direction. And again, this is going to give it the effect of these linear branches that run outwardly from the main tree trunk in between the foliage. Um, once we have kind of established that we can then again proceed to make this darker mix of green which we'll use for the darkest tones in the tree. Um, once our tree is completely dry we can make this dark mix of green again with some blacks and browns and then as we proceed we want to do so by applying these dark tones predominantly on one side of the tree and this is again where we consider the light source being consistently to one side of our tree. Now another thing we want to think about is making sure we integrate these darker tones from the bottom of the tree all the way through to the top of the tree. So we want to keep this consistent quality of mark making ultimately to keep a um, yeah, consistent visual quality of shadow formations throughout the entire tree structure. Um, so make sure you take your time with that. And then lastly, once we have allowed that to dry, we can then again integrate another shadow. Um, and this is where we kind of paint the shadow on a horizontal surface area that falls a little bit more flat and two dimensional to establish that quality of a shadow that is being cast by this three-dimensional pine tree but otherwise guys that is the general process of how to paint a pine tree and an oak tree um, again painting trees with watercolor is quite simple it's really easy once you understand the basic shapes and how to kind of represent these qualities through an abstract painting process trees are quite abstract in their features so once we understand the general shape we can then kind of uh, create these marks that represent them um, within our watercolor painting and then another key thing to remember is that we always want to build up our color palettes and tonal values with these layers of paint and this is where we work from our lightest colors to our darkest colors and working through these different features within our trees ultimately we do want to also consider the actual color palette that is represented within nature itself and how these colors are seen within the actual trees uh, within real life and then using that kind of as a reference for your own mark making process within your watercolor tree painting but otherwise guys that is it from me today i hope this video was helpful if you're interested in relating
related topics, please let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to make more natural painting related topics. And again, if you found the video interesting and helpful, please drop a like and a subscribe. This helps us to grow the channel, which ultimately enables us to make more art related content for you guys. So if you did love the video, please show us some love by doing that. But otherwise, guys, that is it from me today. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Otherwise, until then, cheers.